I've been here in Moscow on scene since about 3 p.m. Since I've been here, I've watched Moscow police cars come in and out of this neighborhood where officials found four people dead. Neighbors say they began noticing police cars flood the area around 12 p.m. today. Moscow police say they responded to a call here on King Road for an unconscious individual. Upon further investigation, officials found four people dead. While police investigated the scene, the University of Idaho enacted a shelter in place alert as university officials reported a homicide near campus. As we've stated, that alert is lifted at this time. Neighbors say most people living in this area are a part of U of I Greek life or are students, but we do not know the identities of those involved or who lives at the residence officials are investigating. This is a very much uh, developing situation and we will continue to stay on the grounds until we have more information to report back to you. Until then, in Moscow, Janelle Finch, Creme 2 News. So police still have this house here near University of Idaho taped off. This right here is where officers found four bodies yesterday. We now know the names of those four students. They were 20 year old Ethan Chapin from Conway, Washington, 21 year old Madison Mogan from Coeur d'Alene, 21 year old Kaylee Goncalves from Rathdrum, Idaho, and 20 year old Dana Kernodal from Avondale, Arizona, and they were all University of Idaho students. Here's a breakdown of the timeline from what we know so far. Around 1 p.m., we heard reports of a homicide investigation near the college campus. An hour later, the school put out an alert on social media. It said Moscow PD is investigating a homicide on King Road. They asked the community to stay away from the area and shelter in place as a precaution. Around 3 in the afternoon, Kremtu arrived in Moscow. Neighbors said most people living in this area are a part of U of I Greek life or are students. At around 5 in the evening, the Moscow Police Department confirmed they had found four people people dead, but it wasn't until late last night that they confirmed those victims were students. The university also said Moscow police do not think there's any active threat at the moment as they continue their investigation. Classes for University of Idaho students are canceled for the day. They say they will resume classes tomorrow. In Moscow, Nicole Hernandez, Crem 2 News. Moscow police responded to King Road for a call about an unconscious person Sunday afternoon. When police arrived, they found the four deceased students inside the home. This morning, the city of Moscow and University of Idaho identified all four U of I students. Freshman Ethan Chapin of Conway, Washington, was a member of the Sigma Chi fraternity. Zaina Kernodal, a junior from Post Falls, was a member of the Pi Beta Phi sorority. Madison Mogan was a senior from Coeur d'Alene, and Kaylee Gonzalez was a senior from Rathdrum. This is a pretty dramatic situation for our campus community. Dean of Students Blaine Eccles says news of the suspected homicide shocked the Vandal community. This is rocking their world. Many of them come from small communities where things like this have never happened. He says drop-in counseling is available to students at any time. But he recognizes that many students have already returned home early for the upcoming holiday. People need to navigate through this situation in the way that best suits them. If students need to go home, be closer with their families, want to return home, I support them in doing that. We're, we're going to support them in doing that. Support for U of I goes beyond the university campus. Businesses throughout the city of Moscow are offering prayers and thoughts for the Vandal community. And because Moscow is a tight-knit community with a strong relationship with the university, this response isn't a surprise to Mayor Art Bettage. I feel very badly for them, and not just for the victims, but everybody else who's a friend and associate with those people. He told me he was shocked by the news about what he's calling a senseless act of violence. This is stuff that shouldn't happen, especially in a small, quiet town like Moscow is, where we're heavily uh, involved with the university. And these are things that affect not just town, but the university, the students, lends everybody to a sense of insecurity about what's going on here and why. And it's a very tragic and sad situation all around. In speaking with Kaylee Gonzalez's mother and sister, they tell me Kaylee was a strong and passionate go-getter. She even already had a job lined up in the tech industry after graduation. Kaylee was one of five Gonzalez's children. She graduated from Lake City High School, the same school as Maddie Mogan, another victim. Kaylee's family says the two were especially close, and Maddie was a part of their family as well. 
Kaylee's oldest sister, Olivia, shared a statement on behalf of the Gonzalez family. It reads in part, Kaylee was, is, and always will be our defender and protector. She is tough and fair, the ultimate middle child. She did absolutely everything she set her mind to. She didn't hold back on love, fights, or life. Kaylee was the ultimate go-getter and constantly wanted an adventure. We still have a lot of questions about what happened. Also looking for answers is Kaylee's family. Kaylee's sister Olivia asked the public to stop spreading rumors about what happened and wait for the facts from police. We are continuing to ask our own questions and will continue to bring you updates as we get them. In the studio, Janelle Finch, Creme 2 News. Ethan Chapin, his brother and sister all grew up here together. They went to school here together and together they enrolled at the University of Idaho. Three inseparable siblings now torn apart. You just couldn't ask for better kids. Dave Hayton considered Ethan Chapin family, all the Chapin kids actually. He and his wife watched them grow up in their Conway neighborhood. They'd come over for fudge sickles from the basement freezer. When the couple heard what happened, they were crushed. And she's crying. And she says, Ethan's been murdered. I, I just couldn't, you just can't get your head around it. All three siblings attended the Conway School before moving on to Mount Vernon High, where Ethan played on the basketball team and graduated last year. All three later decided to attend the University of Idaho. Ethan and his brother were members of the same fraternity. I know I didn't sleep a lot last night. I'm just thinking of them. We had some good times together. The Haytons treated the kids like grandchildren. The couple shared these photos from Ethan's mom's Instagram page. This one taken just a few weeks ago at Parents Weekend. Dave recalls Ethan as smart, athletic, and always respectful. He says all three were great kids, and having one of them gone is inconceivable. I remember last night I woke up several times and I think, gee, I wish somebody would just tell me this is a bad dream. Uh, but unfortunately it's not a bad dream. It, yeah, it's a reality. Still no word as to a potential motive in these killings, no word as to a potential suspect. However, authorities in Idaho do say that there is no threat to the public. In Conway, Washington, Eric Wilkinson for Creme 2 News. We've watched this memorial grow all day long. Students dropping off flowers and stuffed animals, remembering the four young lives that were lost. And there's still a lot of unanswered questions tonight, like how this happened and why. Like it's all just shocking and scary. Like I never would have thought that this would have happened here. Tonight, yellow crime tape still surrounds the house where four young college students were found dead over the weekend, a crime shocking the University of Idaho community. Classes were canceled today and some students have decided to go on Thanksgiving break early. A lot of people left last night and then we were like, I know we were like the only, like one of the only ones who like actually stayed here last night. My mom has called me every single hour for like since like 7 a.m. this morning. So yeah, they but they they want me to come home if I if I don't feel safe. Moscow police have not said much about what exactly happened, but they have released the names of the victims. Two of them, Zana Kernodal, a junior from Post Falls, and Madison Mogan, a senior from Coeur d'Alene, were servers at the Mad Greek restaurant in downtown Moscow. The restaurant posted on Facebook saying the two brought so much joy to the restaurant and all they encountered. Mad Greek is now closed, giving staff time to grieve along with the rest of the community. And the university is planning a vigil for the victims. That's taking place at 5 p.m. on Wednesday on the lawn outside the administration building. In Moscow, Kyle Simchuk, Krem2 News. Well, the Moscow Police Department hasn't added any new information since they released a press release this morning about the homicide investigation. But a few hours ago, we did speak with the Lataw County Coroner. Kathy Mabbitt is calling all four, four deaths homicides and that the cause of death is likely a stabbing. But we won't know that for certain until the autopsy report comes back and she can make that official ruling. Now to take that a step further, 
Lataw County contracts its autopsies out to Sp the Spokane County Medical Examiner. And I confirmed this afternoon that Spokane County is in fact conducting the autopsies on the four University of Idaho students. Now, the Spokane County spokesperson says the medical examiner has not yet started those autopsies. Once they are done, the medical examiner will forward her recommended findings to the Lataw County coroner. Now, the Moscow Police Department or the Lataw County coroner will release the official ruling. Now, this afternoon, when we talked to the coroner, she described a gruesome crime scene. Well, there was a lot of blood. It was, yeah, it was... It's a very sad scene. Mabbitt adds that she does not believe the toxicology report on each of the four University of Idaho students will be relevant to the manner or cause of death. Now, Mabbitt has been the county coroner for 16 years in Lataw County. She says in that time, there have been at least two other multiple homicide scenes that she's been involved in. But she says this current homicide investigation is the only one she's been to where there are four people at one scene. Now we are continuing to press local authorities like the Moscow Police Department, as well as the Lataw County Prosecutor. I have made multiple calls into their offices yesterday and today, have not got a call returned from either agencies. Now we know there are University of Idaho students, their families, and the greater Moscow community, many of which are still concerned for their safety, even though the police department says there is no active threat to the community. So that is why we remain here in Moscow pressing for answers. And once we do get those, we'll continue to keep you updated. Reporting in Moscow, Amanda Rowley, Krem2 News. Two of the four University of Idaho students who died on Sunday, Zana and Maddie, both worked here at Mad Greek Restaurant. The restaurant has closed its doors for now, and they have also put out a memorial for all four of those students. Tucked inside a Main Street restaurant bench yeah, um, is a memorial catching the community's attention, including Annalise Mitchell. Yeah, She's a sophomore at University of Idaho. I just wanted to kind of take a moment to remember them. Annalise is one of many students struggling to process the death of four fellow classmates. It's been surreal, devastating, horrific, honestly. Annalise knew the four students from the university's Greek life. When I did talk to them, they were just nothing but kind and not, nothing but bright and positive, and um, they definitely made an impact on everyone that they've met. Now, as classes resume today, many students are leaving campus. People can't even focus on their schoolwork. Like, my sisters and I, we've tried to do our homework, and it just, it's not possible. Annalise says for her friends that are still here, she's just being supportive. Nothing will be the same. At least we're all here for each other and just remembering. But that community doesn't take away the pain. <laughs> just angry, honestly, because again, these, it's four people four people that have touched so many lives and have touched my friends and to see them in such grief and suffering, it just makes me angry. In Moscow, Nicole Hernandez, Crumb 2 News. It's not something you ever expect to hear. Through the tears and shock, Jim and Stacy Chapin described the moment they found out their son Ethan was gone. It's not a call that you think that you're going to have to speak with a funeral home directors and the FBI and have it hit national news. Earlier this week, Moscow police identified Chapin as one of the four victims killed in the home just off campus. Stacy and Jim said their son was staying with his girlfriend at the house who was also killed, Zana Kernodal. So far, police haven't released many details about the investigation. And as questions mount, the Chapins say they wanted to make sure Ethan's story was told. It's important for us to get Ethan's story out. We don't really want anybody else representing him. And it's hard to have people speaking on his behalf. So we think it's best for us to do this. He's the kind of kid that everybody wanted to be around. You yeah. know, he just, he was just a good kid. He's a good kid. That kind did, to all. Didn't deserve what happened. No. They say Ethan was a triplet. He and his siblings were extremely close. In fact, they all decided to attend the University of Idaho. Jim says Ethan was an athletic kid who played club soccer and refereed youth sports. His smile, he says, lit up a room and he made friends wherever he went. They had just spent last weekend at the university for parents weekend. And as we pulled out of Moscow, we literally were like, we've done it. 
We, we've literally done it as parents. We've created three incredible humans that will go on and have something great to offer to this um, world. Honestly, all three of them. A week later, as they grapple with this horrific loss, they say they're determined to keep moving forward for Ethan. But we will not let this sink us or sink our kids. Because if anything, they have to go on and shine Ethan's bright light on their own. Mm -hmm. Moscow Police Chief James Fry, University of Idaho President Scott Green, and the Director of Idaho State Police, Colonel Kendrick Wills, all spoke at today's press conference. Before Wednesday's press conference, Moscow Police had only told the public the four students were found dead inside the home late Sunday morning. Wednesday, they revealed that all four victims were stabbed to death. Chief Fry says two other roommates were at the home during the attack but were not injured and he is not calling them witnesses. He said they were also home when police arrived at the house. Fry did not say why the call to police was not until noon on Sunday when the attack happened in the early morning hours. Police said it appeared to be a targeted attack, but did not explain why. Moscow police have also been saying that they do not believe there is an ongoing threat to the community. But today, the tone changed. Police say the search for a suspect continues and people should look out for each other. Meantime, we found this video from a Moscow food truck that's from early Sunday morning. It shows two of the students, Kaylee and Maddie, ordering food around 1.40 a.m. This is one of the last times they were seen. Moscow police say this video is helping investigators recreate a timeline of events from that night. And it has helped. It gives us um, a time and space where uh, we know that um, two of our victims were, and that helps us a ton, and we'll continue to follow up all leads that we can. The family of Kaylee Gonsalves have seen the video and agreed to let us publish it. They identified Maddie Mogan wearing the long black jacket and Kaylee, who is with her, in the white sweatshirt. It's normally a place where everyone feels really safe. Joseph Woodall is the manager of the grub truck. He is seen in the video working the cash register, taking the girl's order. This afternoon, he described their interaction with me. One of the blondes was just a little bit more cheery and kind of bouncing around a little bit more. And then one was like standing there and doing the hello, how are you, and goes through the interactions. And normally, that's pretty normal. In most of our groups, there's people that are more energetic and people that are managing the energetic people. Joseph told me he felt incredibly sad when he learned the news about the girls he had just seen the other night. I hope they find the person. Hope they get the person. Definitely a somber mood at tonight's game. Quite a few empty seats in the student section as well. A lot of them have gone home early for Thanksgiving break, but we talked to students that decided to stick around. They were at tonight's game and they told us they were happy the university didn't cancel this, gave them a chance to see some of their friends, classmates, and somewhat sense of normalcy. A lot of them telling us they won't feel entirely safe on campus until this murderer is caught. Basketball fans, this time, we ask that you please stand and join us in a moment of silence for the four University of Idaho students that were tragically taken from us on Sunday. The names of the four students found murdered inside a home near campus were read aloud before tonight's game. The Moscow community still in shock. Uh, definitely like a ghost town here. Weird seeing everyone just pack up and leave. Like many other students, Jessica Jacobs and Asha Cummings haven't been going to class and say they don't feel as safe alone or on campus as they did a week ago. The only reason we're still here is because we had a little trip plan going opposite of our homes, but you know, we've been staying together every night, trying to stay as safe as we can, but we definitely are gonna go home early. A question of safety is on everyone's mind right now. During a press conference this afternoon, University of Idaho officials said they've increased campus patrols and students can request a security escort across campus day or night. 
The university is also excusing all absences. That if they want to leave and go home now, they absolutely can. We're, we're going to support them in doing so. Classes were canceled the day after the four bodies were found, but resumed on Tuesday. School officials say some students want to keep their minds occupied. They, they gain comfort in being around their student, you know, other students. They gain comfort from interacting and staying busy with their faculty. <laughs> I'm happy they're still doing it, and we're here to support our team, so we're happy to be here. Lucky that we still get to come to this and like feel safe here. And the university has postponed a candlelight vigil until after Thanksgiving break in order to give as many students that want to attend the opportunity to. That's scheduled for sometime on November 30th. In Moscow, Kyle Simchuk, Krem2 News. The Spokane County Medical Examiner finished the autopsies yesterday and sent them over to the Latah County Coroner. With that, the coroner sent out this. You can see here at the bottom of the document, cause of death, homicide, murder, and manner of death is stabbing. Moscow PD says whoever did this used a large knife. We also learned yesterday Idaho State Police say investigators think the killer got in the house through the sliding glass door. ISP says the forensic team is taking another look at the house to make sure they didn't miss any details. Uh, we intend to come out uh, and solicit information from the public if they are within certain areas that we believe are of interest uh, for this investigation. Uh, and so hopefully today or early tomorrow we will come out with a map uh, where the victims were at specific times during the night and ult ultimately ending at their residence. The FBI's Behavioral Analysis Unit is now helping in the investigation. They do crime analysis, create suspect profiles, and help with interview strategies. ISP says an FBI command vehicle is on its way to bring Moscow up more resources. As for the other two roommates who were home during the attack, ISP says they are cooperating with investigators. They are not suspects or persons of interest as of now, but ISP says nobody is clear from the investigation yet. In the newsroom, Nicole Hernandez, Crem 2 News. Earlier this evening, the University of Idaho released a statement urging students to be vigilant. For those that are still here, security will increase over this weekend. Moscow police say patrols have also ramped up around the community. The school district says patrols will monitor the area around its schools. Idaho State Patrol is helping with this extra police presence. People I spoke with in the community today are less concerned about their own safety and more focused on making sure the suspect or suspects are found. In your 70 years of living in this area, would you ever have thought that something like that could happen? No, really. Uh... No, they I definitely was shocked and a little scared, but at the same time, I do have a feeling that the person who did this was somebody that they knew, and so I wasn't personally afraid. This morning, I noticed quite a few more law enforcement just out and about. Um, I'm really grateful for them. People say they're thankful Moscow PD are calling on the necessary agencies to help protect the community and figure out what exactly happened on Sunday. In a press conference yesterday, we learned from the Moscow police chief, James Fry, that the department has called on 25 plus investigators, the state police and FBI to assist in solving this case. The Moscow Police Department maintains that this was a targeted attack. For that reason, the people I spoke to say they don't personally feel a threat in the community. But like said, the University of Idaho is reminding people here to remain vigilant and provide any and all information you can to Moscow Police. In Moscow, Janelle Finch, Crime 2 News. People across the country want to know what happened inside this home and why. For those living in Moscow, there's still a lot of fear and uncertainty. And how could there not be? Four young college students were stabbed to death and their killer still hasn't been caught. Ever since the yellow crime tape went up, the Moscow Police Department has faced scrutiny for not providing as much information about the case as some would like to know. You know, there's some things that only the people that were at that scene would know. And so you definitely don't want to release that information to the public. Gary Jenkins is the former chief of Pullman Police and now serves in that role for the WSU Police Department. He says sharing details is a balancing act, keeping people safe and informed without compromising the investigation. Just trying to make sure that when detectives go out and interview people, it's based on what they know, not what they've heard. Uh, on the news. The University of Idaho told students this week they could go home early for Thanksgiving break if they didn't feel safe around campus, and many already have. 
Jenkins says that could pose a challenge for detectives trying to interview witnesses. It was for him during the hazing death of Sam Martinez, which also occurred right before Thanksgiving break in 2019. Most of the witnesses left town, and that's the type of investigation you need to have a one-on-one -on -one in-person interview. And so it does, it does definitely complicate uh, that investigation. Jenkins says the answers all of us want could take time. They're trying to juggle a lot of balls in the air right now. Particularly with four victims, it's going to be a very complex uh, crime scene. It's going to be a complex investigation. New details are emerging in the stabbing deaths of four University of Idaho students. Tonight, the Latah County coroner says the four students were likely asleep. Some had defensive wounds and each victim was stabbed multiple times. Authorities found no sign of sexual assault. Moscow police say at this point in the investigation, they do not believe the two surviving roommates or the man seen standing near a local food truck were involved in the murders. Police also addressed rumors swirling online claiming the victims were gagged and tied, saying those are not accurate. And the identity of the 911 caller has not been released. Detectives say they've received nearly 500 tips which are being processed, investigated and cleared. 38 people who may have information about the murders have been interviewed. The whereabouts of the killer and the knife used are still unknown. Detectives seized the contents of three dumpsters on King Road to look for evidence. Police have also gone to local businesses to see if anyone recently purchased a fixed blade knife. Anyone who saw something suspicious has video surveillance or can provide relevant information about the murders is asked to call the Moscow Police Department. Investigators are still trying to piece together where the four University of Idaho students went the night before they were found in their Moscow home stabbed to death. Investigators are hoping the map released today will provide additional tips from the community. The map details the night of Saturday, November 12th into the early hours of Sunday, November 13th. It highlights locations and approximate times when Kaylee Gonsalves and Madison Mogan were in downtown Moscow, while Ethan Chapin and Zana Kernodal were at the Sigma Chi house. Investigators believe Madison and Kaylee were at the Corner Club on Saturday from 8 p.m. to 1.30 a.m. Sunday. Then they were at the Grub Truck on Main Street at 1.40 a.m. Five minutes later, the map says they returned to their home on King Road. I drove that route this afternoon starting at 4th and Main and ending at the King Road home. With some light traffic on the road, I arrived at the house in about three minutes. This suggests it's reasonable to believe Madison and Kaylee traveled by car from the food truck, but that detail has not been confirmed by police. Investigators also say Ethan and Zana were at a party at Sigma Chi from 8 to 9 p.m., then returned to the home on King Road at 1.45 a.m. The fraternity is a short three-minute walk from the house, but still, there is a five-hour gap on their location between the party and arriving at home. Investigators hope someone might remember being at or near the locations they've identified around the same time and potentially saw something suspicious or relevant to the investigation. Police are asking those people to call the tip line or email with that information. This is all good information, but it brings up even more questions, such as did investigators use the students' cell phones to identify the locations and times on this map? Did Madison and Kylie walk or drive or get a ride back to the home? And did Zana and Ethan spend only one hour at the Sigma Chi fraternity? I have several calls into Idaho State Police and other local authorities working this investigation. I have not heard back, but we will continue continue to press for answers as the story develops. Reporting in Moscow, Amanda Rowley, Krem2 News.